to be here to share with you again about uh, Shiro Victory, uh, how to uh, live in the love of God, the, plan, uh, the wonderful plan of God, the first part of Shiro Victory, and then take care of every kind of problem in our lives. And then thirdly, how to make the best use of our life, to live our life to the fullest. This is the teaching of Shiro Victory. I've talked about it already uh, uh, three times already. And this time we'll come to the fourth point, and this is in the second part, to take care of all problems in our life. Amen. And I'm sure that, you know, one area of our life that we are often affected are by people. Uh, let's read together point number four. We can learn not to be affected by people and by our situation. Very often we are affected by people, especially uh, many of you being household workers, that sometimes your bosses might not be the nicest people. Sometimes they are. And, and then it's very easy for us to be affected by them. And then uh, on a daily basis that when we go home, you might feel very uh, unhappy, burdened, uh, and, and it is hard for our Christian life. So how do we handle that? And today we'll, we'll talk about that. And because God has provided a way of victory in all situations. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Okay. Now first is that when we grow up, uh, it's very natural to rely on people and are affected by them. When we are a little child, uh, that is very uh, natural for us to rely on our mother, on our, the ones who take care of ourselves. And then if they are unhappy, it's very natural for us to be affected by, by them. So since childhood, in our mind, we always think, okay, people's influence are important in my life. It's hard to get rid of these influences, hard not to be affected by them. It's, it's a thought that sometimes is fixated in us, that we always think is too hard, too hard. Uh, so it's a, from a, uh, the way that we grow up, that because when we grow up, uh, many of us may not be thinking of relying on Jesus, uh, even you know, when we're a little child, a little baby. And at that time, we think that people are the most important, uh, are most important in our life. And, uh, oh, sorry about this. Okay, <laughs> sorry, I didn't make this in uh, English. Okay, now, very often before we, we believe in Jesus, there are, there are three things that we rely, rely on. The first part is ourselves. And then the second part is people. And the third part is wealth. So it's very uh, common for us to say, I have to rely on myself and rely on people and rely on my wealth and what we have. And then, but the point is, people are limited in many ways, right? First of all, all people are sinful. Actually, our parents are the best people we might meet in this whole world, other than God. That our parents really love us more sincerely than any other people in the whole world. Uh, but still, they are sinful, right? That they might have their own limitation, their own sins, and they might have their own selfishness, uh, and their limited ability, even though they want to help you, but they might not be able to help us in all situations. So they have limitation. And also they have limited wisdom. So in many situations, they might say things that they should not have said. That we have limited wisdom, right? We always often say things that are not uh, edifying to people, that might hurt people. And we don't have the wisdom to handle different a difficult situation and also all people will die one day they will get old get sick and die that's an effect of life so when we trust put our trust on people what happens is when we come upon this uh, shortcomings of people then we are disappointed so that's a fact of life that very often we are affected by people okay and uh, now, when we grow up, we rely on people, but the biblical teaching is totally opposite. So that's a switch of thinking. Sometimes when we believe in Jesus, we still follow the worldly way, that we still rely on people. It's not wrong, but we must realize that people have limitation. But it's a fact that very often 
that we don't let this biblical teaching come into the core of our lives, that we don't live uh, with the uh, biblical principles. Isaiah 222, uh, let's read. Stop, Stop trusting, trusting in mere humans who have but a breath in their nostrils. Why hold them in esteem? The people only have breath in their nostrils and then when they die, they have nothing. Uh, when people you know, come across diff different kind of limitation, they really cannot exceed that limitation. So the biblical teaching is that don't trust in people, but trust in God alone. And then in Psalm 24, 1, uh, let's read. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. So including people and everything we have that we trust in, actually they all came from God. So we need to learn that to trust in God is the only sure way to live a happy life, to live a fruitful life. When we trust in people, we are bound to come across uh, difficulties and disappointment. Now when we trust in the blessings of God, I mean, uh, let, let's uh, uh, make it clear. God gives us blessings, but very often we trust in the blessings rather than trusting in God. If we trust in the blessings, trust in ourselves, trust in people, and trust in wealth, what happens is, do you know what these are? Locusts. And they can come to reign. Now it represents that when we trust in these things, Satan or our sinful nature or other people's sins can take away our, our blessings. So the more we trust in people, the more disappointed we are. Uh, Let's think about our lives right now. If we trust in people or trust in something else, we find that we always come across disappointments and unhappy experiences. And so there's like locusts that come to raid our life and take away the blessings that God wants to give us. When we trust in the blessings instead of trusting in God. Okay. Now here I list five ways that people affect us, and today we won't be able to go through all this. But let us realize that there are at least five ways that we are affected by people. First, let's read. Affected by people's words, action, and relationship. That's very common. That's one big in, uh, uh, way that people affect us. Uh, second, rely on people or carry other people's burden. And three, have high expectation on people. Four, get emotional because of people. Five, have no love toward people. Don't build our relationship with people. So there, these are five areas. First is that we are affected by people's words and the action and the relationship. And then, secondly, rely on people that, oh, they are so important in my life. Or oh, carry their burden. They, we care about them so much, we carry their burdens. For instance, a lot of parents will carry the burden of the children. Of course we love them, but don't carry their burdens. Uh, don't say that, oh, uh, my children are not, are not good, are not following God, and so I just don't have joy anymore. We cannot carry their burdens. And then number three is have high expectation on people, on a husband, on a wife, or on a children, that they will be uh, loving God, they will be lo uh, loving toward us, they will follow God in every way, and very often we find uh, that we are disappointed. And or we expect them to do good in school or do good in their work, and very often they disappoint us, and then we uh, we are unhappy. Uh, very often people get married, and then they have a high expectation of the husband to be loving and caring, and find that they are not, and then we disappointed. So expectation. When we have expectation, we can only have real expectation in God. Okay. Only God can can satisfy all our expectation. People right. can only reach our expect expectation to a certain degree. So we cannot trust in people totally, including preachers, mm. myself. If you think that I'm perfect, you, you'll be disappointed one day. <laughs> so preachers are not perfect. We cannot expect them to be perfect. So even though we try to be as close to be, be, being perfect as possible, but still uh, we are disappointed from time to time. Mm -hmm. And uh, our, our peer, our brother and sisters too, if you expect them oh, uh, always to be nice to me, always listen to me, always help me, and very often we 
we have disappointment, right? So we, we learn not to be, have too high expectation. And number four, very often, because of people, we get emotional and happy. And we have to be aware of that. And number five, uh, the, f the fifth point is, oh, oh. Uh, the fifth point is that having no desire to love people or build a relationship. One to four is rely on people too much. And number four is have no desire to build a relationship with people, okay? Now we come to the first part. Affected by people's words, action, and relationship. For instance, if people don't like us, it's very hard for us to be joyful, right? It comes very natural. When people don't like us, we'll be hurt inside. But it's a fact of life that there are always people who don't like us, right? So that's why many Christians still have difficulties in life because we feel unhappy because people don't like us. So it's a fact that we are affected by how people like us or they don't like us. And or people don't accept us and say, I'm not doing good enough. I'm not uh, uh, reaching their expectation. Or people criticize us. When people, someone criticizes us, it's very hard for us to say, well, I try my best, I just put down the burden, I'll just do my best. Uh, you expect too much of me, I, I have to put that down. Now, very difficult, right? It's very difficult not to be affected by people's criticism. Or when people are emotional. When you see someone, in Chinese we have an expression, the face looks so dark. I, I don't know uh, uh, how do we express that. The point is, some people expression, uh, when they see you, they have no desire to be, uh, you know, to show any kind of joy or ex acceptance of us, that they just look unhappy when they see us. And that way, we are affected by them, right? And then, when they are emotional, or people are cold, oh, they have uh, just a distance to us. So, are you affected by people being like this? toward us? Yeah. It's very natural, right? Yeah. But then, if we are affected by people like that, we are bound to suffer from time to time, right? Yeah. So it's very important for us to learn not to be affected by that, right? So that's a fact that we need to work on, uh, something that we need to work, work on. Okay, when we feel unaccepted, when, when, you know, when people don't accept us, then very often, is their problem, but we might be afraid that we'll fail. We say, oh, I'll fail, I, I'm not doing well, I'm not doing my job well, or help, I feel helpless, oh, uh, people don't accept me, and then so we feel helpless, or feel lonely, people don't like me, oh, I'm alone, I have no one to help me, no one to accept me, or say, have no meaning in life, I, Oh, what do I live for? People don't like me. Does that, do those thoughts sometimes come in our heart? When people don't accept us, and then we say, Oh, I have no meaning in life. What I, what I want to say is that it's a fact that we are affected by people. It's a fact of life. We have to realize that. When we realize that and accept it and be, uh, aware, be aware of that, then we can face it, right? If we don't realize it, don't, we, we're not aware of that, then we cannot face the problem. Okay, Psalm 118, verse 6, let's read. The Lord is with me, I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? So, the Lord is with me, I'm not afraid. I have the Lord, He loves me, He is powerful, He is almighty, He is a wonderful plan in my life. What can mere mortals do to me? When you look at the life of a person, well, he will get old, he will die, but even when he's young, he can get sick. Even when he's young, he has limitation. When his body temperature is raised by one degree, two degrees, he will suffer, including ourselves, right? When we have any kind of germs entering our body, we will suffer. When we have imbalance of chemicals or hormone in the body, then we'll suffer, right? So,
people are limited. When God wants to stop them, instantly cannot, they cannot do anything. But when we look from a human point of view, we find that people are powerful, especially our bosses, right? It seems that they are so powerful because they can, you know, they can fire us, they can sometimes yell at us and get away with it. And so it's a fact of life that our, our daily experiences seems to be different from the biblical uh, teaching. What do you believe in? You, you know, from day to day, we, feed, we see the problem of people. So very often we think that this is the truth. But we have to look at the Bible and say, if God doesn't allow that to happen, it will not happen to me. When that happened to me, when someone mistreat me, it doesn't mean he can really hurt me. If I don't let him hurt me, if I don't let him hurt my soul, if I just trust in Jesus, he can do nothing to hurt me. So today I'll talk about how we can learn not to be affected by people. And it's very, very important teaching. Genesis 50 uh, verse 20, let's read. You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good, to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So the, the elder brothers of Joseph tried to harm him. They, at first they tried to kill him. And then later they sold him. But God intended for good. Now, it's not God who caused them to, to sell Joseph. But God uses what people does to him, did to him, to accomplish his plan. That's the supernatural power of God. That his power exceeds all human uh, sins and limitation. And God can accomplish his wonderful plan as long as we follow God's plan. If we follow Him and love Him and trust in Him, then nobody can hurt us. But very often, it's our natural tendency to trust in people. Is it true? It's very natural for us to trust in people. But God's teaching is, don't trust in people. If we trust in people, we are bound to be disappointed. Okay, so, God has His plan to accomplish what is being done, the saving of many lives, that God can save many lives. Not only that, but God lifted Joseph up to be a, you know, a great influence in, in Egypt and also for the future of Israel, for the people of Israel. So God has a wonderful plan. And then Galatians 1.10, let's read. Am I now trying to win the approval of human beings or of God? Or am I trying to please people? If I were still trying to please people, I would not be a servant of Christ. So, if we know that it's God who is in control of everything and every person, then do we please people or please God? Uh, of course we do try to please people too, but we don't put that above God. We please God. We also please people, but we don't, please, we don't try to please people beyond beyond God that if he tells us to do things that are not godly we don't you know listen to them we don't obey them so it's it's right for us to obey God and not to obey man if, if there's a conflict so we don't have to get approval of people in all situations we try to we try to you try to do good in your work but sometimes do you have you noticed that no matter how hard you try, you might not get the approval of your bosses. Is it true? Yes. Because it's something in their lives, in the people's life. And also it's true in husband and wife relationship. Is it true that sometimes when you try your best, your husband or your, your wife will still complain? Mm -hmm. And then you think, you think oh, oh, how can I satisfy them? Oh, they can never be satisfied. And I have this experience. I find that it's easier to satisfy, to, to get approval of God than to get approval of people. Amen. Because when we get approval of God, we just repent and trust in God and follow God and obey Him. Even if we don't do it perfectly, God still accepts us. Amen. But when we do it with people, sometimes we already try our best, but they still don't accept us. Now, it's also true sometimes we treat our husbands like that too. Sometimes they already try the best or they 
did improve. Uh, in some areas, they're not good enough. But we always look at their shortcomings, right? So we do the same thing to people because we are human, that we are sinful. So we have learned not to. Not to get, our goal is not to get the approval of people. Our goal is to get the approval of God. So it's very important to, to know this. Okay. Now here is one thought that God gave me that we can apply. If an insane people person says to you, you fool, on the street, would you mind it very much? If the person is insane, no, because you know there's something wrong, right? Yes. Now, the, what I want to make it clear is that I'm not saying everyone is insane. I'm saying everyone is sinful. So everyone will, in a way, like insane people, will sometimes say you fool, right? <laughs> They're not insane. But because of people's sin, people have a natural tendency to hurt people. Actually, if you think of your whole day, when you think of what we do to people, can you find one single day that you always bless people and you never make people unhappy? That you never hurt people? Sometimes it might be hard, right? And you find that, you look at the people around you, it's hard to find a person who's always trying to bless you and always do good things and never say bad things to you, right? So as humans, we all fail in this way, that we have this natural tendency to tease people, to step on people, to make people feel unhappy, right? So when people do this to us, do we have to feel bad? Oh, he teased me. Oh, he yelled at me. Ah, oh, I'm so hurt. Oh. Because it's their problem, right? So we have to first accept that we are sinners. They are sinners. So it's natural for people to mistreat people. That is, is natural. When, so when that happens to us, we don't have to keep letting this negative thought stay in our mind. To, uh, not to let these people affect us. Okay. Negative words are like a, a flaming arrows used by Satan. That Satan attacks us in all directions, and one way he attacks us and make Christians weak and you know without strength is by the words of people. Satan is very happy to use the words of people to attack us, and so we have to protect us, protect us with the shield of faith and say, "The Lord loves me." So we have to declare this from morning till night and say, the Lord loves me. It doesn't matter what people say to me. It doesn't matter what happens to me. The Lord still loves me. The Lord cares about me all the time. And, and God has a wonderful plan in my life. Can we, can we say to the person next to you, God, the Lord is, really loves you. The Lord has decided to bless you. And the Lord will lift you high. Let me ask you this. Do you believe that from morning till night when people say negative things to you? Do you think about what they say to you or do you think, I'm still blessed by God. God loves me. It doesn't matter what they say. Which one do we pay more attention to? People's words or God's word? That's ideal, right? But I'm asking you a fact of life. When someone yells at you, do you immediately say, it doesn't matter what they say. It's what God says to me is most important. Now, I'm asking you, uh, as a matter of fact, are you affected more by people or by God? So, at least we realize that. You know, we realize that's, a, that's an ideal situation, but as a matter of fact, very often, these flaming arrows did shoot us and make us lie flat. Oh. Has it happened to you? Oh! So it, it does happen to us, right? And so we have to hold up the shield of faith and say, and set boundaries with negative words. When people say negative words, we have to hold up the shield of faith and say that it doesn't matter what they say. And it doesn't matter if I have failed. Even if I have failed, 
If we have failed, is it right for us, for people to stamp on you all the time and hurt you? No. no. Even when we are wrong, even when we have done something terrible, still people should not do that to us. So we have to set boundaries and say, I have to protect myself because these are attacks from Satan. So next time when someone say that, say negative things to you, can you say, I have to hold up the shield of faith. I don't have to be hurt by them. Amen. Now, very often the, the problem is when people say one time, you know, one negative word to us, and then we'll meditate on it over and over and over again. So the one who accuses us most is whom? Who accuses us more? It's ourselves. It's ourselves. When your boss said to you, how come you never learn? And then you just keep saying, how come I never learn? When can I learn? Ah, ah. And then we keep blaming ourselves. And that's each actually, the boss might say it carelessly. But we keep saying that over and over, playing the tape over and over again. I mean, that's the most unenjoyable experience. But we, it seems that we enjoy doing it continuously. Keep accusing us, right? So we have to be aware of this, this problem of us, that we have a, a what do you call it? A way to grind our soul. A way to hurt our soul. So we have to learn to, when we get up, Immediately say, Hallelujah, praise the Lord. And sometimes people have a natural tendency, even when people don't say negative things to us, we start to say negative, negative things to us. When we wake up and say, Oh, I have to start a day of work. Oh, I have to do this, do that. Oh, we. So we are the one person who attacks us more than other people. So we have to be aware of that. And to say, even my words, my negative words, I have to protect myself from my own negative words, right? Yes. Hallelujah. Now, negative words stay in the air for how long? Just a few seconds. But it can stay in our mind for how long? Yes. For years and years, for the whole lifetime. Is it worth it? No. no. But it seems that we like to catch those negative words from the air. We like them. We hold on to them. But the Word of God, we don't hold on to them all the time. So we have to learn to hold on to the Word of God. Because the Word of God, you, you read through the Bible, it's always positive, encouraging. Now even though the Bible does have warnings and punishment, but all these are to warn us not to sin. Amen. And the Bible tells us that when we repent and follow God, God's blessing will continue to follow us. And yeah. even when we sin, God still intends to bless us, right? Amen. When Israel sinned, God did not say, I give you up. But He says, I seek you. I, I think about you. I always love you. So God is like that all the time, all the time. And, you know, I admire the patience of God. Hallelujah. If you try to teach someone something and the person continue to, you know, to forget what you teach, you teach him. I, I don't know if you have ever teach your children mathematics. You tell them, okay, uh, mathematics, and then they keep forgetting it. Do you have the patience to teach them after 50 times they fail? <laughs> but we have failed more than 50 times and God Amen. still Amen. is patient, right? So God is wonderful, He always, always forget the past and always bless us with new blessings so we have to put it in our mind God is always loving and I don't have to listen to negative words of people I listen to the Word of God okay now and many people hurt people unknowingly and both will lose right look at these pictures people fight against each other and on the right hand side what's the end Suicide. That because they say, oh, actually, 
the person might have a you know a, a husband or a wife that really who is terrible. But you know, is it right for us to die because of the, of a terrible person? No, but it's a fact that people die because of a terrible person, right? Yes. Because it's their problem. But people are affected by them and then they kill themselves. It's really, you know, it's really foolish. So the point is, we unknowingly hurt each other. When our bosses yell at us, how do we always usually respond? This is how you might respond. <laughs> Very seldom we say, yes, 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 yes. Very seldom do we still continue to continue to smile, but we'll <laughs> try to do something back. So we, you know, we, we might hurt them in a different way. So we have to know that we have this tendency. People just have a tendency to hurt each other. How many times have you hurt our husband or our family members? Many times. Unknowingly. But actually our husband, our spouses are the most important people on earth, right? To us. Are the most important people to us. But unknowingly we hurt them many, many times. So we have to be aware of that and say, Lord, help me. Teach me. Teach me to know that I do have a tendency to hurt people that we don't have to do that. Hallelujah. Now this is the five step toward victory. That in a true victory, this is a way uh, that uh, you try to remember the key words there. First, uh, let's read together. Be aware of a problem. Uh, the problem could be a problem that we're affected by people, a relationship, or uh, the, wor uh, the words of, uh, negative words of people. And then second, believe it is destructive. Now believe, that when we are affected by the problem, then it's destructive. Even when people say things negative, we don't have to be hurt by them. But when we are hurt by them, then it's destructive to our lives. When people say negative things, I don't have to be affected by them. Let's say it together. When people say negative things to me, I don't have to be affected by them. Can you say it together? I don't have to be affected by them. I don't have to be affected by negative words. Say it. I don't have to be affected by negative words. I don't have to be affected by negative people. I don't have to be affected by the world. So keep saying that to ourselves. And, and I, you know, God has destined to bless me every day. God has decided to bless me every day of my life. Okay? And then number three. And apply biblical concepts. How to take care of that problem? Because the Bible says, bless those who curses you. And always uh, bless people, forgive people. That's biblical concept. And not to be affected by people and have the joy of the Lord. That's biblical teaching. Four, pray to get strength. Or meditate on the Word of God. You know, meditate on the Word of God and pray. But I'll make it short, so I just say pray. Five, choose to submit to God. So when people hurt hurts me, I choose to uh, rely on God. I choose to have joy. I choose to thank God. So that's uh, the five step. Actually, uh, this is a way that the Holy Spirit teaches us. We notice that when we have sin, usually the Holy Spirit will say, say to us, uh, uh, this is sin. You have to repent. Turn away from it. It's not good. So that's we are, uh, we are aware of that by the uh, Holy Spirit. And then secondly, then we, the Holy Spirit reminds us that it's destructive. And then, and then we think of the biblical teaching to forgive and to bless people. And then we'll say, Lord, please help me. And then number five, we'll say, okay, we decided not to you know, be affected by people to follow God. We find that this is the way, I find that this is the way the Holy Spirit teaches us. So I put it down in writing. These five steps. Can we remember the five key words. First is aware. Second, destructive. That the problems are destructive. And then third, biblical concepts. Four, pray. Five, choose to submit. So when, whenever we have any kind of problem, now the problem could be that we are emotional. Oh, we're so unhappy. And then, 
so I'm aware that I'm unhappy. And then I know that emotion, negative emotions are destructive. It will hurt me. And then third, apply biblical principles, concepts that God blesses me, I can be joyful. Even in the face of difficulties, I can still rejoice in the Lord. It doesn't matter if I lose everything, if I lose all my money, if I lose everything I have, even when I lose my life, I can still rejoice in the Lord. Amen. Can you say that? It doesn't matter what people say to me. It doesn't matter. They, they cannot hurt me. It's a choice, actually. It's a conscious choice. So when you go back to work tomorrow, or tonight, you might start working tonight, and then when you hear negative words, then you say, I don't have to keep thinking about that. It's their problem. Now, if it's our problem, then we say, sorry. But if it's not a problem, we can still say thank you. <laughs> Take it joyfully. And then, we, and then we choose to bless them. The point is, don't curse them. You know, in our hearts, don't say, ah, one day he'll be punished by God. <laughs> don't say that. Because if we say that, God might put the punishment on us. Yeah. So don't say negative things about them in our heart. Don't keep that purchase in our heart. But we keep blessing them. And then we pray, Lord, please give me strength. And then I can choose to rejoice. So if you have no place to go, go to your room or go to the restroom. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Or when you're cooking or doing chores, now there are two ways to look at your chores. Oh, I have to keep sweeping the floor, vacuuming every day. That's one way to look at life. But what other way? Hallelujah, praise the Lord, oh Jesus, hallelujah. Even when it's very difficult, scrubbing. Oh Jesus, Jesus, hallelujah. <laughs> do, we, do you think you can try to do that? Now when you I mean it's unavoidable that you have to do hard work, right? It's unavoidable. But very often we suffer when we are doing hard work. But we can choose to say, I rejoice in the Lord. Hallelujah. Have you noticed in one day's time how many negative thoughts come into our mind? Constantly. If you are aware of that. Then you say, why should I let all these negative thoughts stay in my mind? Remember when you do hard work, what do you have in your mind? Is it negative thoughts or positive thoughts? Enjoying God. Or you say, oh, so hard work. Oh, why do I have to do this all the time? Oh, oh. When will Sunday come? Oh, oh. So when we live like that, then it's like always suffering, not enjoying life. Okay. Now, let me ask you the word we just said. Do you think you can apply it? Now, I, I will tell you, this is, in a way, it's easier to understand. If I say it simple, it's like this. All people sin. So all people hurt other people, including us, ourselves. We hurt other people and we hurt ourselves. So we realize that all people have sinned. And we know that God loves me, so I don't have to be affected by people. And I can rejoice because of God's love and His plan. So I don't have to be affected by people or by myself. And I can rejoice in all situations. It's very simple, right? But to apply it to our lives, somehow it's very hard for human to apply this simple truth to our lives. Do you find it true? Yes. It's very, very hard. So it's something we have to learn to be doing it, to, to be doing it consciously. That we have to say, today I choose to rejoice in the Lord. When we wake up, you know, this is what I always choose to do. When I wake up, I always say, Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. When I'm, uh, when I'm awake, anytime, I would think of the Lord. I try to think of the Lord all the time. And 
rejoice, Lord, the Lord loves me, and always try to keep a peaceful and relaxed uh, a heart. Always have this peace in me. When I pray, I my goal is that my heart is totally relaxed and peaceful. Oh, oh, totally relaxed, totally burden free, and it's a way of life. But I find that you know I teach, I taught this to many people, but I found that not many people have learned this simple truth. Many people just have a natural tendency to always go back to problems, stay on problems. I've counseled many people, pray for them and experience the peace of God. And then two days later they say, oh, this happened to my family members. Oh, this happened to me. Oh, I'm so unhappy. And then I have to tell them again not to be affected by people. And then it happens again a few days later. So I find that it's a natural tendency because of our sinful nature always to dwell on problems, on people's problems. And so it's something we need to learn to be aware of and do it consciously. Hallelujah. And we go to the second point and we might not, uh, we might not go finish all five points. We just go to uh, maybe this point and then, we'll, uh, and then we'll stop here. Okay, the second point of this not to be affected by people is, let's read. Overly relying on people or carrying the burdens. They will rely on people. Relying on spouse, children, family, boss. Relying on people's acceptance and praise. That, for instance, if you serve the Lord, you lead praise and worship. And then when no one, no one says anything good to you, no one says any word of appreciation to you, and it happens for months and months and months, it's very natural for us to say, how come no one says anything positive to me? How comes no one, no one just say thank you to me? Oh, am I doing it in vain? Is it all waste of work? You know, it's very common for people to rely on people's approval, rely on people's help, rely on people's worth. Of course, these are good. Christians should do that. But as Christians, we should learn not to rely on this. Actually, I tell you, I say positive things to people all the time. I have blessed many, many people. But I want to tell you, only a minority of them will respond to me. I mean, they, they accept my help. They say thank you. But very, very few people will come to me and say, Pastor, how are you? Uh, how do you face uh, difficulties? Uh, do you, you know, uh, uh, how, how are you handling the problems? How are you uh, uh, physically? How are you uh, uh, emotionally? Everything. Uh, or, or people you know, do kind things to me. I find that this is only a minority. But when I see people, I always bless them. If I rely on people's response, I would be very disappointed. But actually, I, I want to say, I have probably more positive response than most people. Why? Because I've helped so many people, so out of the so many people, at least a few would do positive things to me. But if I rely on people's positive responses, I might be very disappointed. Actually, when people come to me, they always think of, Pastor, can you help me with this? Can you help me with that? I need your help. Please help me. Can you find a time to see me? Very often people uh, do this. I, I welcome them to do that. Actually, I welcome you. If I can help you in some ways, I'm happy to do that for you. Actually, I don't look for people's approval. I don't rely on people's approval because if I look for that, I might be disappointed. Let me ask you, have you got enough approval and acceptance from people? Have you got enough approval and acceptance from people? Most people don't, right? Yes. And then very often we just dwell on that. Oh, people don't accept me. They, they don't approve of me. Oh, what's the use of serving God? Sometimes we might link that together. But please, we say the most important thing is that God approves of us. And He likes us for what we do. And also a relationship with Him. God is very happy. So when we rely on people, then we'll be disappointed including our children including our children right 
But it's very natural for parents to say, my hope is in my children. I hope that they will be nice to me when I grow old. But it doesn't always happen. Or my spouse will continue to love me. It might not happen. So, but we have God. And God will always treat us well. And then Psalm 146 verse 3. Do not put your trust in princes, in human beings who cannot save, because people just cannot save us. People have no ability, and also people do hurt us. So don't put a trust on people, but put a trust on God alone. Hallelujah. Another thing is, sometimes when we help people, we might carry the burden. We help our children, our spouses, and they continue oh, to have problems. And then we carry them on our back and they say, it's so heavy. How come my children never, you know, learn to be self-sufficient? How come my children always have problems? How, how come they always have problems? Well, I have met many parents, especially mothers, because mothers usually are more responsible. It's true, you know, mothers remember the home, the needs of the home. And husbands, now God created men and women different. So women are more responsible in many ways, responsible for details. And husbands just have a tendency to forget many things. <laughs> so if you expect your husband to remember the, your, your needs as, as well as you, how you remember his needs, you might be disappointed. So you find that very often they don't remember you at all. <laughs> your birthday. <laughs> Don't remember your birthday. Huh? <laughs> so then you say, oh, when will they learn? And then we will be very disappointed. But we say, it doesn't matter. God remembers my birthdays. Uh, God remembers <laughs> to bless me. God is so good. And, and that way we don't, then we are not hurt by people. And I hope that what we talk about today, okay, that will help us to overcome these problems and say, Lord, I don't rely on people. Okay, let's, let's see if we, we can finish it. And number third point, have high expectation on people that sometimes we expect them to be good uh, or co-workers expect them to be good, but very often they fail us also. So uh, when we have high expectation, then we'll disappoint it. Okay, and then when they, when they kind of reach our expectation, then we get disappointed or emotional you know, or angry. And also that affects our relationship. Uh, okay, we have to discern the level of expectation toward different people. Now some people are more responsible. We can expect more, but be reasonable with what uh, our expectation because some people just never can reach our expectations. So we learn to be, uh, to, to be reasonable. Uh, for instance, your coworkers, you find that some coworkers in the Lord, some are very responsible. Then we learn to trust them more. But some people, their spiritual life just haven't reached a level. Or some coworkers always forget. Or they are always late. So if we expect them to be always punctual, then we'll be disappointed. So we have different levels of this uh, expectation of uh, people. Uh, it's right to have expectation. In co-working situation, there always, are always an expectation, even of your boss. You expect them at least to provide you with the food you need, right? I mean, that, that's at least a, you know, the minimum expectation that your boss will not say, oh, there's no food for the next three days, you know. <laughs> it's a realistic expectation. You expect that, you know, they, they will pay you. So this is an expectation that we have reasonable expectation, but so very often people are hurt because of the uh, expectation are not reached. And then, um, okay, we we'll try to finish this very quickly. I hope you don't mind. And then we get emotional because of people. So be we become aware that sometimes we are frustrated, we are angry, we are worried because of that. Be aware of our emotional beings, uh, the condition of our emotion. I'm, I'm always aware of that. 
I notice when I'm peaceful and joyful, whenever I notice any kind of negative emotion coming into my heart, I immediately take care of that. I find that even me, I, I've written this sure victory. I've learned to be consciously uh, living in a joyful situation. But I've noticed that for no reason. Sometimes, for instance, when I step, up, step out of here, when I go home, I might say, oh, I do this, I have to do this, I'll, I have this difficulty. That this thought will continue to come, but immediately I take care of that. That I want to say is, even for me, I find that negative emotions will come for no reason. You pay attention to that for the next few days. You notice that when you wake up, sometimes for no reason at all, you might feel unhappy. I'm aware of that too. So I learned not to be affected by that. I learned to take care of that instantly. And then when people are not nice to me, when people say careless words to me, in me, I, I'm aware of that. And then I, I learn not to be affected by them. Okay. Um, and then number five is people have no, let's read, no love toward people, don't build up relationship. Now this happened to many people I know. They're already 40 years old, 50 years old, and they never build up deep relationship. And then later, you know, when uh, we grow older and then our friends move away and uh, different things happen, and then we find that we have no real friends. Even when people go to church, they might not have real friends. Many people just have superficial friends. I'm not saying we need to rely on people, but it's a fact of life. It's important that we have people we can pray together, people we can work together, people who have the same heart as we, that we can uh, serve God together. It's important in our life that we are not loners, that we need to build our relationship with people that are long-lasting. But some people just never do that. The reason, why? Because they just say, well, uh, it takes too much time and people don't respond and uh, they just don't like me. So there are different reasons. But how can I have long-lasting relationship the way I have is I keep blessing people. I always bless people. I always, when I come across different people, I always say nice things, I always help people. And so many people respond to me very well. And so I have friends in many places. Even in, a, a, you know, in, in the mission field, when I go to different places, immediately I make friends there because I continue to bless people. So I always have good support everywhere. So I hope that you do the same too. At the same time, we don't rely on people. But at the same time, it's important for us to have good networking with people, good support with people, have people who pray with us, that have people we always bless. But some people say, I'm too shy. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say to people. Well, actually, when we listen to people, then we have good relationship. So these are five ways that we are affected by people, and I hope that that we can work on these areas. Let's read together and then think about which area affects us most. One, affected by people's words, action, and relationship. Two, rely on people, carry out people's burdens. Three, have high expectations of people. Four, get emotional loss of people. Five, have no love for five people. Don't know our relationship with people. So these are some problems that we need to face and then take care of them consciously. First, are we affected by some people around us? If we are affected by them, so uh, learn, to, learn to be aware of that and learn how to take care of the problems uh, with these people. And then, are we relying on some people? Or have too high expectations on some people? Or are we emotional because of some people's problem? And then number five, do we build up long-lasting relationship with people? So I pray that we'll all have victory in our relationship with people. At the same time, we are not affected by people. At the same time, we build up meaningful relationship. And one thing very important, if we come across a good friend in Jesus, someone 
who is sincere, who is loving, who is willing to build a relationship with us, we want to treasure that person. We don't come across good friends all the time. We don't come across good friends all the time. They don't come every day. They come only a few times in our whole lifetime, sometimes. Real good friends only come a few times in our whole lifetime. So these people are very, very important. We want to hold on to them, but not to rely on them. Yes. We want to treasure them and bless them and do good things to them. And that includes our spouses. They are, you know, they are very important to us. So I pray that we we'll all have victory in this area. Let's pray together and ask, and ask God blessing on us. Uh, you can sit down for now because we want to have a, a short time of meditation. Please uh, play the music there.